episode 23, Fireside Chat with Blake Rice of The Blake Down, part two. I hope you enjoyed the first half of my chat with Blake. I mean, how could you not like this kid in the hobby, right? If you felt inspired by him, I mean, really, imagine being the one who got to talk to him in real life. I mean, he had me going throughout the entire gamut of emotions in the first half, just making me laugh, think, and cry. Oh, yeah. And I kept it in. I'm probably one of, if not the biggest fan of his now, and I get the pleasure of meeting him and his dad next week at the National by the time this episode publishes, Uh, and, and I just can't wait for that. And yeah, I think he is absolutely legit, and not in the way of like those legit posts that some people pin to their profiles, which by the way, I want to make a future episode about like the five levels of online scams and how that Really, that legit post that people put up on the profiles means absolutely nothing. But when you look at Blake's page, you you know, which, by the way, give him a follow uh, at the underscore Blake down if you haven't already. I mean, this kid, he is legit. L-E-G-I-T legit. Okay, so. But the sad thing is that we know that there is the good and the bad of the Internet. And unfortunately, when you put content out there, you put your face out there. And when you're, especially when you're succeeding out there, you do get attacked online. It's happened to me, and I'm sure if you're listening to this and you're successful, it's happened to you. It's also happened to Blake, and I hope, uh, you know, he's listening to this, and I hope he's doing well. But I've seen some of the posts, uh, the comments on his posts. And and, And when I look at the profiles of the people behind the profile pic, it's these grown adults. You know, and I don't know how their life is, but, you know, I imagine that they're just like, likely beaten down with life because in order to criticize a kid for living his best life i mean for me that's just so sad to see but that's the thing right if you're not putting yourself out there if you're not making content you you have no clue how it is to do it and so you really have no empathy towards another person who is creating content and who is succeeding and so To me, that's the whole premise of this podcast is to humanize and to encourage others to try different things in the hobby, to be a hobby S. Thompson so that we can empathize with each other because the beauty is in the struggle and we really don't need to dip each other's buckets to make ourselves feel better. That's not what this is about. At least for me, that's not what the hobby is about because the hobby is supposed to be escapism and in the most positive form in my opinion so like i've said in earlier episodes we are the ones in the hobby who are the weird ones to people in the outside in the real world so you know it's it's my opinion that there's enough of a social stigma on us hobbyists already so why make it harder for ourselves why dip each other's buckets so that's my opinion on all of this and also, I think that as adults, we can become so jaded and also overcomplicate things. And here is where this wonderful, soon to be middle schooler giving life advice. And he reminds me so much of the youthful exuberance in my two kids, especially my older son. And once this publishes, I'm definitely going to let them listen to this episode and, you know, any episode they want, because I think it's clean and family friendly. But, you know, I think that my podcast, you know, that's that's my goal because even though my podcast analytics tell me that no one under the age of 23 or also, I guess, over the age of 60 listens to this podcast, I don't know if you currently have kids in the backseat of your car or if you have this podcast running while you're getting dinner ready or washing dishes. So for all, for all intents and purposes, my plan is to keep this podcast free of cursing. Uh, I will try to have to remember to say that to my future guests, although I don't think any of them went over the line so far with my previous guests. And so speaking of my previous guests and part two of today's episode, nothing against my first eight guests, but Blake. Oh, wow, man, I am just still processing how awesome he was as a guest. The hobby is so lucky to have him as an ambassador. The creative idea that he that you'll hear about 
uh, about the card breaking league and thinking about people with disabilities like this truly warms my heart and i think that the hobby needs this kind of out of the box thinking instead of saying oh you know it won't work for x y or z reason that's that's just so limiting and so whatever blake wants to get help with with regards to getting this off the ground or any idea he has i'm all for it an adult, especially if you're not in a creative job or industry, I think that we just lose that creativity, the way of looking at things with optimism. We just get beaten down with life. And so that's why I consider myself so lucky to have had to have my wonderful kids and to have had Blake on as a guest. Uh, just recently, I took my uh, one of my kids to the pediatrician. And like many pediatrician offices, I don't know if yours has the same or if you have kids, but they have like this aquarium in the in the waiting room and they try to stock it with like all the, you know, like the Finding Nemo fish, like the clownfish and the bluefish and all of that. But when it came to that particular aquarium, um, I I mean, this is not me just kind of like uh, the timing is it the timing of this is just so perfect uh, because it comes with uh, Blake's episode. But you know, my son saw something and he told me to like, take a look at the aquarium and look at it. And I couldn't see what he was looking at. And he just kept saying, it's right there. It's right there. And so I had to, you know, like get down to his level and look and I could see what he was talking about. And it was this, you know, really tiny, small fish that I didn't even see, um, you know, for, for several, you know, whatever, like moments of trying to find it and tilting my head and turning around. But it's that getting down to a you know, kids level to see things from their perspective. I think that's just so vitally important because sometimes we're, we're the adults. We just stand and we, you know, yes, we're taller, but sometimes our vantage points aren't the best vantage points. So to bring it back to, to Blake, he really does give me so much hope for this next generation of hobbyists, of collectors. And I know he's just one voice in the hobby, but I hope that his message of positivity shines bright throughout his time, not just in the hobby, but as he grows up. Because, wow, I mean, middle school. I wish him nothing but the best with middle school. Uh, that's something I know is coming down the pipeline for my kids real soon here as well. And it's a time of transition. You know, these kids, they grow up so quickly. And, you know, I think I've said this in the past, but the days are long, but the years are short. And as I say that, um, hmm, yeah, this might go long, but it's okay. I mean, I'll give you your money back if you don't like this podcast. Um, a, jo- a thought just came in my mind, and this goes back to what I was just talking about with regards to being the weird ones in society by doing cards. But, you know, we always hear about how collecting cards is a kid's thing, that it's not for adults, and that we need to grow up. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, what if what if we all grew up too quickly? What if for whatever circumstances that happened in our lives that we were asked to or even told to or forced to grow up quicker than we wanted? Okay, so I'll use myself as an example because, you know, I've mentioned this before, but I'm a child of immigrants and I will admit that I felt like I grew up too quickly where you know, maybe not as a as an elementary school kid, but once I became a teenager, I feel like I had to help my kids navigate, not my kids, oh my gosh. I feel like as a kid, I had to help my parents navigate complex systems and institutions that they were unfamiliar with. Like, you know, for example, trying to help figure out who to call or what to do when you get an unfamiliar letter or bill mailed to your house. You know, being in the room of, you know, say a doctor as a pseudo translator, you know, because my parents, they knew English really well, but they just wanted me there just to, to be there just in case or to, to understand a complicated subject matter, maybe, you know, to save face because they were embarrassed to explain it during the car ride home or the subway ride home. So if you're a child of immigrants, you, I think you know exactly what I mean. And if you're not, Maybe you still had, you know, similar experiences where you just felt like you grew up too quickly. So I don't know. I mean, for those of us where maybe that did happen, what if we're trying to connect with cards so that we can connect with our past, with our childhoods, you know, to to feel that nostalgia and, and you know, when times were just simpler because maybe we felt that our childhood was cut short with having to grow up so quickly. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, that thought came across my mind. So I just wanted to share it. So, you know, I think that's something that 
I'm going to have to think about more and ponder and maybe I bring it up another time and just maybe my, my thoughts change on that or they'll evolve or something. But going back to this podcast episode, I really hope you enjoy it. Second half, Fryside Chat with Blake Grace of The Blake Down. Thank you for listening. You guys are awesome. And have a have a good podcast listen. Enjoy. Tilly, I'm kind of more like my dad. Okay, okay. Good answer. Good answer. All right. So the premise of this um, podcast is, is this, you know, The Card Diary by Hobby S. Thompson comes from this book called The Rum Diary by Hunter S. Thompson. And Hunter S. Thompson was a guy who liked to do a lot of different things and report about it. And so I know you like to do a lot of different things and report about them too. Like it's almost like you you got to be like the next kid reporter. I feel like, but um, you your dad told me like you're like a huge World War II history buff. Is that right? Yes, very true. Would you like to hear anything? As, as however much you would like to share, please. All right, let me think of a fun fact here. All right, <laughs> I hope this isn't too like any fame, but uh, in World War II. I'm trying not to make this graphic or anything, but in World War II, there there used to be paintings that the Germans would leave sideways. And when officers came by, since, you know, officers were back then were very polite and they were always like so neat and they liked to be like very formal. When they would see these paintings, some uh, officers, they would turn the painting back right up. And there's actually a little explosive back there. Whoa. So I, I think you can tell what kind of happened. Yeah. I'm not going to go we into detail. To- yes, yes. We, let's not. So yeah. the reason I asked that, again, just thank you for sharing that the, uh, World War II. Uh, like, we just have to, uh, um, what's it called? Um, I'll just have to re, um, what is it? Uh, change the the title of this to like World War II history facts. No, um, <laughs> but like, um I encourage folks to try many different things in the hobby. Uh, like, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard about grading and I'm sure you've heard about, well, I don't know. Have you heard about like custom card art where people actually like cut out uh, little parts of cards and like make it, make a new type of card? Yeah. You know, uh, personally, I, I don't think I've actually seen one of those videos, but I've heard about it. I've okay. heard about it. And I've, uh, I've actually gotten cards out of packs that, you know, I have like little, different edges and like they're kind of cut and cut uh i think those ones are pretty cool i like i like to see one uh like one once in a while yeah and uh now i actually remember what that one question was that we forgot it was what do i want to be when i grow up and i want to be a pilot wow unexpected on mp4 Wow. So do you want to be like a uh, pilot in like, you know, flying commercial airlines for like people who are traveling or like military pilot, like Top Gun 2, you know, something like that? First, I I want to do like Air Force and then commercial because like commercial (laughs) is a good way of retiring. You, uh, I wish you the best luck. If there's anything I can do to help you with that, um, you know, let's definitely talk offline. uh, Well, through your dad, of course. Um, Speaking of movies, I, I'm sorry, I just brought up Top Gun 2. Um, have you seen that? Oh, I don't know if that's like too, you know, old for you, but no, no, um, I've, I've have, seen. have you seen sport? Like, do you have like a favorite sports movie? I'll just name two and ask you if you've seen them. Have you seen Rookie of the Year and have you seen Sandlot? Because those two were my favorite movies about sports when I was growing up. I have definitely seen Sandlot and Adam Sandler. I have met actually. And, uh, <laughs> oh. You know, okay. when I met him, there was this really, really funny part that I can't uh-huh. get out of my mind. Okay. I yeah. met him, and I was playing baseball at the time, yeah. uh, Little League, and I said, I like to catch the balls up to the glass. And he's like, the glass? And yeah. I'm like, no, the grass. And he's like, the glass? <laughs> Man, was messing with me. My, my, little, my little toddler brain couldn't handle it. <laughs> Grass and glass. I love it. I love it. So you would be catching, uh, you know, you, you would be fielding because I think your dad said, and we can talk about this, like you you are currently a right fielder. Is that correct? 
I yes, I uh, am a right fielder. Uh, uh -huh. Right field. Sometimes it's quiet, but once that ball comes, <laughs> you're like, "Ooh, yeah, baby!" <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually a reference to something that that voice I just did. Okay. You might recognize it. Mm. What is that? He's a YouTuber. Oh. I, but you might know him. Yeah. That might be a reference that I don't know. Um, just being a little bit too old, I think maybe. Uh, but I maybe some of the listeners will tell me what I missed there. But it's all good. Um, you uh oh my gosh, I don't know how much more time we have with you, but I did want to ask uh the next set of questions it's about fun. You being the uh, media uh, hobby ambassador, um, media, yeah, media ambassador for the national. Is that right? Right? Yes, it is true, and I am ready. I can't wait to meet you, national. Can you please tell us um, how it is like to be ambassador for the national? Like, what are what are going to be your duties before national, during national? Well, uh, one of the things I I'm doing before the national is I actually have some complimentary tickets that mm. I'm giving out to people when I meet them uh, mm. that are able to go, and uh, then basically uh, they get one day of a mission any day. So one day, any time. So well, it's when when the when it's going on not mm -hmm. after the national don't just walk in the door and be like <laughs> oh i'm late yeah <laughs> <laughs> just trick the time yeah but i think it's gonna be pretty fun uh you know yes. i haven't i haven't been like an ambassador for uh anything much really but uh mm -hmm. you know i'm also trying to promote it uh through yeah. my content mm -hmm. and uh you know it's it's I, I still think, like, even beyond, like, any advertisement or, like, a sharing about it, I think it actually would be really cool if I, if every, like, people who are watching this could be able to come. Because that would yes. be cool. And then the... Um, that would be pretty cool if they're like, "Oh, I heard, of, I heard you, or like saw you on the card diary," which would be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. I, well, I will say we are recording this uh, two weeks before the national. I very much plan to uh, publish this as soon as I'm able to. Um, I All like right. to sometimes do these introductions uh, for the episodes. Um, I I am I cannot wait to have this published out there. Um, you. You are, I, I, I'm people who have listened to this podcast know that I'm very rarely at a loss for words in, in a good way. Um, but th this, this, this interview, like I was ready for it. Like, I've been your content. I had questions, but I don't think I was ready for, cause I've seen your content, but experiencing this in real time, your aura your positive vibes your energy it really like even though we're on video right now it's coming through and i hope it comes through to the listeners in the audio um I, I, yeah i should stop talking really like you you are carrying this entire podcast episode i think you, i think you really are oh, oh man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for for the audio listeners Blake is doing an awesome dance, and he is just – he is feeling himself, and he is feeling so good, and I love that. Um, let me ask you. You are also an ambassador for Filth Bomb Breaks. Yes. Now, How is that? Yeah. Well, the thing is is that uh, since I had been doing my content for a good while, like, I mean, I haven't been with them for that long. I haven't been with them for a year at all, like oh. only for some months. Uh, yeah. You know, they they reached out to me, and I thought it was a pretty cool idea because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm fine with being with anyone. And, uh, you know, they were pretty cool guys. I mean, <laughs> they took me on a FaceTime and showed me everybody. Uh, they talked with me. And, uh, you know, they believed in me, and they like kids in the hobby, and think they should have more space. Yes. So. That's one reason why I went with them because they support kids and I'm a kid. And you know what? I like more kids in the hobby too. So, yeah. So why is that? Yeah, go ahead. The kids just need more room in the media and hobby. 
Hmm. Can you, so I wanted to talk more about that. Cause that actually was one of my questions. Um, why do you think it's, why, why do you think it is more, uh, oh gosh, I'm having a really hard time in this, uh, this, this one, I think guys, why do you think it is important to have more kids in the hobby? Well, I think it's more important. It's important to have kids in the hobby because I mean, we're the next generation. I mean, some people nowadays, their parents probably collected cards like my dad. So since the the thing is, is that, uh, you know, I think more kids should be in the hobby because I, I think lots of kids would really enjoy it. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So can I ask you, um, I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about your local card shop in Colorado and also just, you know, you go in there and, and you know, you you see all these things you want. And it's almost like going to a toy store, right? You all these singles, all these uh, sealed wax. Like, how do you feel like uh, with regards to the price of sealed wax? And I know that's a very high level. I don't know if you're ready to answer that type of question, but I want to treat you like a, you know, a, any other guest and just kind of like give you maybe, you know, an opportunity to speak on that if you have if you have an opinion on it. Thank you. And I, I was actually going to say something about people taking me seriously. Now, hey, I might be doing these funny little dances, but at the end of the day, please, please just respect, please be serious with me. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm talking to you. Don't don't be like <laughs> funny dance he's doing. Just <laughs> take me seriously. And okay. in a serious way about it. Uh, I, I just hope people can like see me and not be like, oh, that kid probably can't do much. T please take me seriously. I can do a lot. That, yeah. that is awesome. Okay, and so I let have me ask awesome you. Ideas. Yeah, I want to hear them uh, or maybe have you on for a, a uh, second time because I don't want to take too much of your energy here because thank you so much for giving me your time. Oh, time no, here, I but... have infinite energy. One day, my parents <laughs> went out and I ran around my countertop like my, my – my yeah. island until yeah. they came home. I only had like two <laughs> water breaks and only five sips. Oh so if you goodness. think about it, children have infinite energy. Once you're 18, it's over. But uh, <laughs> speaking of getting older and stuff, at my middle school, you can make a club, but you have to have 10 people, including mm. you, yes. and a teacher to sponsor it. Yes. Now I'm thinking, like, kind of. Have you seen basketball? Uh, basketball. basketball? Yes, love that movie. Very funny. Uh, yes. and, you know, I like the idea how they mm -hmm. took uh, baseball and basketball and put mm -hmm. it together. I think that was just a cool idea, uh, because they're mm -hmm. two pretty good sports. But uh, I was thinking, you know what? Instead of like college kids doing this crazy stuff with like baseball basketball I, I don't even know what they call those things aren't they like baseball basketballs <laughs> i forgot what they called them in the movie but uh right, i was right. thinking that in my card breaking league that i could make like ah. like start out small at my school as a club but then make yeah. it into a league because i think people who are handicapped and stuff can still enjoy sport even though they're not able to play others like uh if they're disabled physically they can still open packs i mean and mm -hmm. if someone could even help them because teams teams man it's all about just being kind and stuff anybody could join if they wanted to join, everybody should be able to help them and just be really kind and have fun. That's a word I like to hear. F-U-N. So, all right. Let, let's keep, sound let's, right. The F-U, but. Okay. <laughs> like, you are. Right. You are hilarious. Yeah, okay. Here's, here's the like thing. Like humans. Let's keep cooking with this idea. All right. So. I know that some breakers, this card break league, I love this idea, but I want to talk maybe a little bit more and let's get this out into the open and to the universe. I know some of these breakers really like chasing or saying like they have these count counters on their bios for Instagram. Like we've pulled 30 one of ones. Do you think like pulling a one of one could be like a challenge or like additional points in this card breaking league? Yeah, so I'm thinking in the card breaking league, uh, it's all dependent on what you pull. And I mean, uh, you know, 
some of it technically has some skill. Now, most of the time it's luck, Mm -hmm. but I feel like a one out of one is like a grand slam. I feel like it would be point based. And, you know, you do have to have some strategy to be careful with the cards. I mean, like they could get Mm -hmm. bonus points for opening the pack nicely Mm -hmm. and uh, like remembering to put it in the top loaders and everything. And uh, last but not least, we would like, how about this? After a team pulls like a one of one, a week later, we check on it to see if they took care of it. And then in their next game, they get like starting points because of that. So I think that would be pretty cool because if a team struggles, but they do pull one out of one, next game might actually really help them. The hobby, the hobby needs you, Blake, like 1000%. You, your idea, just that one idea. And I know you have so many more and I've talked to your dad about the ideas you have. And I'm just so impressed. I think sometimes looking at things again, like not to, you know, like I'm treating you with the utmost respect, but like coming at it from a kid's lens is just, is, is refreshing. It really is. And this card breaking league kind of like the pilot thing. If there's any way that I can help um, lift this off the ground, I really would like to help you. So let me ask you, when it comes to breaking, do you like watching breaks? Yes. Yes. I mean, I sometimes since I have ADHD, uh, oh. when I see something exciting, I yeah. will go. Yeah. I would like <laughs> shake my hands around like this and make like a little sound because yeah, what I do snap is thing. I right, flop look, it yeah. and then my thumb smacks against my finger. Yep. So. Yep, we're doing it together right here. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do and, that uh, so much when I was a kid. I don't really do that. I, 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 when I see someone <laughs> pull a one out of one, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, what's the thing? Do you like, uh, let's go, or, you know, you go, oh, snap, or, yeah, like, oh, yeah, like, what's your, like, go to saying when there's a big card? Probably, I, I mean, I'm mostly like, woo, woo. Ooh, yeah, yeah, and also most- like, <laughs> Yes. I, I'm oh. mostly quiet except for ah. Yeah, but you know the scene Blake down right, right here, here yep. Uh, yep. On, on the screen. It's reminding me about uh my logo. Now I'm pretty sure you've seen my logo. It's yep. on my channel right now. Yes, yes. But uh I have a new logo and uh mm. I'll give you a little hint what it kind of uh what it kind of referenced to. But uh, mm-hmm. think of my birthday and uh, a movie. Then you okay. might get it. But uh, ladies you're, and gentlemen. Is this the world premiere that you're showing? Ladies and gentlemen, we we got a logo, a, a new <laughs> logo. <laughs> I I am I feel so honored that you are making the world premiere of that logo. Um, for the, for the people. For the people who are uh, audio only, because I don't want to explain it out loud, uh, I want you to do the honors. Could you please yeah. explain what you just showed on camera to uh, to the audio listeners? So, here, let me get it again. Like paint, so, a, paint us a word picture, like your uh, Bob Ross. I don't it know is, uh, it's kind of curved. It has a baseball going over the letters. Uh, mm-hmm. It says the Blake down. Uh, Blake has a kind of like fireish uh, fade to it. Uh, mm-hmm. It goes red yellow and uh, white Mm -hmm. and uh, under it in black uh, with a black part under it and white says with Blake Rice and it's kind of a back to feature style. That's Mm -hmm. what I was referencing to with my birthday and the movie because my birthday is October 21st and that's the day they travel to which is pretty nice. So uh, if any audio listeners are listening, uh, I hope you're able to just take a quick look uh, when I do like put a post out about it. So then you can actually see it. But uh, it's a, like I said, a kind of retro back to the future style. Very much so. That's the first thing that came to my mind when you showed me that. But I didn't want to like step on your toes. I wanted you to be able to explain (laughs) it to the listeners. Uh, I can't wait to see the rebranding. The uh, you're already in a second logo, and you're eleven. Like you're <laughs> you're you're crushing it. You really are. Like I'm just so impressed. You are. Uh, you again. Just just the just the name of Ginterviews. Like the play on the word interviews with the G and Ginter. Like Ginterviews yeah. is 
is perfect. Genius. Yes. Blake, you, you are, <laughs> you are a genius. You absolutely are. Um, you've had like, you. you've, you've interviewed so many people. Like I, I said, Dr. James Andrews, you interviewed Miss USA from Connecticut. You guys, you guys were talking about food, like lobster, like, uh, how much you love seafood. Like you don't, I, I talked to your dad about it. Like my kids eat McDonald's so much and you don't even eat, you don't like to eat fast food or you don't like to eat McDonald's. You love T tell tell the listeners what what do you love to eat? I one sentence. I really really love seafood. <laughs> um, and before I continue, one more thing about my logo. It'll yes, be on yes. my poker chips. I'll be giving out at the Chicago National. So Whoa. I I I had I still uh, I've pretty much given out all of my orange ones that I had from the Mint Collective. Those are like one out of ones. We're having more, and you could have like the new logo. What is it? so? If anybody, if you're mm -hmm. coming, you can get one of the new logo poker chips. Now, a thing about the seafood is I don't know why, but just fish, shellfish, all of it is just so good to me. And luckily, I have no food allergies that, like, I'm pretty sure. I only have environmental. So, okay. I mean, I can eat as much seafood as I want. It is, I mean, seafood in general is just really good as long as you, like, you put some seasoning in there and stuff. I mean, it can't just be so plain. That's why there's cocktail sauce with shrimp. You're not just going <laughs> to de-shell the tail and go... You put it in oh some sauce. Gosh. It is good. It's and it's also healthy for you. So I mean, like, it's healthy and yum. Well, Blake, I gotta say, I I have a big seafood diet. Do you want to hear what, what it's what it's like? What is it? I see food and I eat it. I I've heard a lot of people do that, uh, but oh, it, it's fine. Man. Oh, I got completely dusted by Blake. The dad joke did not work. It's fine. He said he's heard it too much. Oh, man, I'm <laughs> keeping that in. Even though that's super embarrassing to me, I will keep that in. Your silence said everything It's all to right, me, man. It's all right. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people do it. I mean, you could be walking by oh. a bakery. Is that a cake? Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 hey can, can we go in there real quick and just get that little pretty thing in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so I, I, again, I want to be mindful of your time and your energy and even mine. I, I think, fine. you know, I got to say, I know you're fine. I think I went through a little bit of a emotional and, and not just you just completely uh, deadpanning my dad joke here, but earlier, I just feel like kind of like almost emotionally, not drained, but like spent with like, this this is um like I said earlier, like I, I just feel almost like at a loss for words that how like just upstanding of a young man you are. So maybe I'll ask up that instead of just continuously stumbling over my words here. Uh, I had a great chat with your dad earlier, and you know, I see this in your content too. Um, oh, actually, uh, it's not just from your dad. I, I remember a quote that you had, I think it was with the Dr. James Beck, uh, not Beckett, but Dr. James Andrew interview but i heard you tell him that you like to treat everyone equally whether they're the janitor in the building or the, or the ceo CEO. yes that is a quote of mine it is tell me more about it please well uh you know speaking of that quote i will treat anyone just as equal because if you think about it a janitor is like the lowest from ceo but you know what i think I don't care because to me, there's two CEOs in that room, not just the janitor and the CEO, two CEOs, because everybody can do what everybody can do great things. And mm -hmm. I think that every single person can make their own business or anything because somebody has something special. And if anybody listening or seeing this is like, oh, but I don't really have any talents or anything. <laughs> Try to find one out, like go outside and maybe 
try doing some like diving in a pool like see how good you are at it because like there's a there's some olympic athletes that dive just into pools that yeah that's the whole thing they do mm -hmm. that's a talent yeah everything's a talent and we're all humans we are all important so if you think about it if you go out one day and you think oh i have this thing but it's probably not special I, I dare you to search up on Google professional what you think is a professional like person. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee there will be at least one person who is a professional at it. Mm. I am not kidding. Like there's professional belly floppers. There are <laughs> professional like salt makers. So mm -hmm. you can do anything. Like you are getting to the heart, the, that, the very – premise of this podcast uh and uh hobby s thompson that we should try anything because you unless you actually try you don't know if you're good at it and the other thing that i like to say like you said you're, you're you have a catchphrase about the gender and the ceo like we all start at zero right whether that's from from birth or from like birth of people to birth of accounts birth of any idea uh, we all start from like the number zero and we have to grow from there. And so you are actually living proof of that. You you started from zero, right? We all did. All of our Insta Instagram accounts had, when you first started, it says zero posts, zero followers, zero following. And for you to grow it to where you are now, and I have no doubts that you're going to continue to grow it. It's just you are, you are the embodiment of, I feel like my podcast. You really are. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's it's for me. It's getting kind of dark, but uh, I mean, not too dark because you can you can see some light right there. I can, yeah, I, no, I I, I wrap this up. invertedness right there. No, I, I know it. you're you're like in uh, mountain time, which is two hours behind me. But it is getting late. Uh, you did have dinner, but it is time for you to get your bedtime routine and. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best with the start of middle school. But guess what? In two weeks, we're going to meet up. And I very much, please, 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 so many people may be coming up to you for those poker chips. So please reserve one for me, Denny. Uh, I would very I would love for you to sign it. Um, I just, I I, 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 that's going to be my prized uh, possession from National, I think. Even more than some of the cards that I'm looking for. I, I would love to have one of those poker chips. With and your by the logo. way, yeah. I might still have one original. Oh, uh, you know what? We're going to have to trade for it. Um, I, I want to ask about trade-up challenges and your local card shop, but no, this is, I have to be respectful of your time. We just have to have you on another time. Um, All right. I, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Blake Rice of the Blake Down. I will put thank your, you. uh, I will put your, uh, Instagram handle in the show notes. I will put a link to your interviews. Um, it's, it's, th this has been an absolute pleasure. You've, you've actually made my day. Like, you know yeah. what I'm going to do once after this interview, I'm going to yeah. go up and I'm going to play some Mario Kart. Cause boy, I have still not gotten one cop in the game. I forgot mm. the name of it, but I have gotten this. I have got, Oh, it's uh, the mushroom, mushroom. The mushroom. Yeah, I've got in the okay. star and flower cup. Yeah, yeah. I need to get that mushroom. It's All so right. hard, though. Good luck yeah. with that. I'm, I was pretty good at Mario Kart. I, I'm not going to lie. I yeah, loved, uh, I, I perfected Rainbow Road. I loved playing Battle Arena. Uh, and, and we're talking like two-dimensional, two, none of this new stuff. I do like Mario Kart uh, 8 Deluxe or whatever it's called, uh, the, the one for Nintendo Switch. Um, but I got to say, the original, like, that brings me back to my childhood, like, 100%. Yeah, and uh, the version I play, I, I'm pretty sure you played this one, mm -hmm. Donkey Kong Jr. Just, yeah. just stop throwing bananas in front of me. Man. <laughs> you make me spin out. And I lose all my coins, and I'm Peach and Yoshi get ahead. So oh. I have to retry getting past them after, like, a minute. And, uh, again, thank you, and thank you for making my day. Thank you so much, Blake. I'm going to end the recording here. Uh, have a great thank evening. You. All right, you too. All right, say hi to your parents for me. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll say Bye -bye. hi to my dad and then my mom soon. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, that's why I can't end it. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> bye.